Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. We keep talking about how 2020 to 2024 was like the upheaval times. Okay. Then what does after 2024 look like? We're going to, as much as we understand 2020 to 2024 about sort of foundation laying for 5D, in order to allow that meant that a lot of elements of 3D separation had to emerge in order to clear it out, right? Because we really need to be able to see a sort of vibration shift and change as well. And as you've experienced personally, when you raise your vibration, everything has to come out. Every single bit that we've been holding in every area of our lives within all of our bodies, from the physical, mental, to the emotional and spiritual. And so we've been wrestling with all of these demons over this time. So past 2024, we're still going to be dealing with a lot of that surface stuff, right? I mean, it should be, and ideally that there won't be anything left that is, that's hidden or that is somehow in someone's cupboard behind closed doors. Everything about 3D separation will have surfaced by then, but it doesn't mean that we'll have all cleared out. So is it like a doomsday scenario? Like only the, like the fittest will survive? Despite the obvious doomsday scenarios that we have been playing through, one thing that we are seeing and we will continue to see over the next few years is the power vacuum. So what we're going to be seeing are, are more struggles. And there are going to be power struggles around the the power vacuums that 3D will be leaving behind. That that's sort of the surfacing of all the 3D separation scenarios that we've been playing through is that are going to end up opening up. That we have to resolve somehow as 5D continues to open for us. Does that make sense? Not at all. Okay. So as we said in the previous episode, there's the... Fifth dimensional consciousness framework, right? Yeah. What are the underpinnings? There are going to be many for this foundation, but we've defined that there is, well, we have, we've identified oneness, harmony, joy. Mm. Um, you've mentioned respect. That's not quite an underpinning. We could sort of put that as more of an overarching relational element. Okay. Right. Honestly, it sounds like underpinning to me, but whatever. (laughs) We know how nitpicky they get about language and words, so we'll run with that one. And so if relationships in 3D were based very much on, I need something from you, therefore I will give you something in return. Yeah, transactional. It's always transactional. In fifth dimensional consciousness, if you're looking at oneness, harmony, joy, and mutual respect between all, it can't be transactional, right? But how do we do that when there are still people who are wired for 3D, who are still in positions of influence within our institutions, right? Who are still trying to maintain those 3D tent poles of religion, politics, and economics. So we're going to continue, we're going to continue to see this play out over and over and over until effectively people who hold on to that wiring are gone. Oh, fun times. And they could easily be voted out of yeah. their positions, right? Oh, you didn't mean gone as in like, bye-bye. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be physically. Okay. It could just be that they are removed from position. It could just be that, you know, people are tired of supporting that. And how, when would that be? Oh, Rhea, it's going to take a long time. Okay. <laughs> because for the most part, we are going to be looking at massive generational shifts in order to allow for that to happen. Mm. But you're looking at pretty much 2047. Okay. Effectively, when we're getting years like that, that are like way ahead, it's not going to be us filling those roles. Obviously, it's going to be for the younger generations. Okay. Yeah. So, but I presumably there's going to be vacuums before the younger generations are ready to step up. So how will we be able to know who holds similar values to harmony, joy, and the other one, oneness? It's going to be a bit of trial and error, right? Well, life is trial and error. And I always say that to people, actually, when they're like, how do I know what I want? Or they're like, I don't want this or I don't want that. And I'm like, why don't you just go and try it? Try everything. If you try everything and then you'll know what you want. I mean, 2021, especially towards the end, there was a lot of that. This isn't working. Let's try this. I don't feel like this system is working. Let's try this. There's going to be a lot of that sort of vacillating 
in terms of large collective groups as people work this out because they'd rather work it out externally than internally, Mm. right? But effectively, you recognize when something is out of integrity by asking yourself quite simply, who is upholding freedom and who is asking for a price of admission? Is this allowing me to maintain my integrity and freedom? Does there continue to be trade-offs in this relationship here? Yeah, yeah because sacrificing is it sacrificing for the greater good is a 3D concept. It's not a 5D one. Mm-hmm. And we've spoken about this until I feel I'm blue in the face. But, you know, I understand when you talk about oneness, it feels like, it sounds like, oh, I sacrifice myself for the mm-hmm. oneness, like the greater good or whatever. But no, being truly in oneness is recognizing that we are a community of individuals, mm-hmm. which means that in order for the community to be strong, healthy, happy, in harmony, yeah. we must be strong, healthy, happy, in harmony with ourselves first, yeah. which means anything that brings us out of that, anything that asks us to sacrifice one of those things for it is not in oneness. No. Because does that make sense? Oh, completely. Yeah. I mean, you and I are definitely in agreement yeah. over that. Because how can one honor an individual's gifts and talents and how they can uniquely contribute to society and serve, as we've said, everyone's collective purpose is mm-hmm. when they are not in touch with who they really are? Mm. Because often for me, as on a personal level, I've definitely found that the things that have been the most beneficial to me in my unkarmic life as it were (laughs) were the things that actually I hated about Mm. myself like I'm Mm. stubborn as fuck I am I live in the clouds we joke that I ride a unicorn they are as a side note my favorite animal you know there's a lot of things (laughs) that I call creature (laughs) you know I live in I live in the romance I live in the joy I live in the love like that has always been who I've been wired for and my separation experience was experiencing that none of that was real, Mm -hmm. but actually it was real and Mm -hmm. it was real to me and being able to let that back in wasn't, it wasn't my biggest fault having all of that as being a part of me. Mm -hmm. My stubbornness is what allowed me to get through my karmic journey and all the other stuff is what kept me buoyanted. I don't know what the word is. Buoyed. Mm Mm-hmm kept me buoyed through it. And then on the other side, allowed me to create that for myself, that life that I wanted to. There is nothing about the stuff that we've been told is, you know, bad, the stuff that we don't love in ourselves. You know, a lot of those traits, they're there for a reason. And actually they can have some beautiful qualities to them. So actually this whole idea that to sacrifice and to, you don't know how you can serve until you know how you're happy. Oh, I like that. That is very beautiful. And the thing is, we've seen that play out. You know, I could say that we've seen it play out for pretty much my whole life, but (laughs) we definitely saw it more acutely over the past couple of years. Yes, very much. Where everything was ruled on fear and duty. Yes. And just as we were talking in the last episode about when we're talking about kind of the climate and our relationship to Earth, this is no different. No, it's not. Do you want long-lasting change, which has harmony and joy underpinning it? Mm -hmm. Or do you just want a flash in the pan to satisfy judgment and shame before we go back to how it always was. Mm -hmm. We are fundamentally aware now as a society that we cannot continue the way we have continued, not because necessarily our world is crumbling down around us, but even more simply than that, we are all fucking unhappy living in that world. And as a human race to survive, we cannot remain unhappy. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't not. work. No, because it will lead to our own self destruction. Exactly. As and we've it is. Seen. Mm-hmm. It is. It's leading in, in every single, you know, more creative way than the next. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're watching people like, you know, governments, and it's just all a reflection of us, right? Everything outside is a reflection of us. So yes. the government leaders, the pundits, the talking heads, everything that we're watching, this power struggle that we're watching around us, we really have to think like, is this about keeping us unhappy? And what it was so that the few can benefit? It's about keeping us in service to the collective in the old way. Which worked because, again, in all these transactional relationships, you're always fed just enough to kind of keep you going, keep Mm. you striving, keep you believing you're happy enough. Everything was just about enough, whatever enough meant. And we could always believe that that's what our purpose was around. The more of that world started to fall apart, the more we were forced to really question, well, I thought this was my purpose, but I'm feeling very unhappy about that. 
How much have we ever been happy in that world or how much was just a relief from the pain? Precisely, because we equated happiness with... Just not being very, very, very unhappy. Exactly. Sort of transitory pleasure. Yeah. Just sort of those those bracketed moments of maybe yeah. taking a holiday once a yeah. year where you could sort of yeah. breathe a sigh of relief before you kind of run back home and into the yeah. into I don't the want to be on a bullshit hamster wheel for my life. That's not why I'm here. No. And that's why your generation came to be. I mean, that was really the millennial role was to sort of say, Fuck this. Fuck this. <laughs> Although half of you kind of said, Fuck this. I'm going to do it another way but i'm gonna do it <laughs> and then you're like i don't know how effective you were in that role because <laughs> remember what Gaiden said some several episodes ago was the millennials didn't do enough sadly and i really wish that weren't true but to be frank the power struggles exist in part because there weren't enough who said fuck this but again it's not necessarily also their fault because no, our no. parents generation you know like <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not trying to lay blame or fault at all. No, no, but what I'm saying is like, I mean, obviously I'm the queen of like, literally, I think people find it funny now how contrary I am and how contrary I've always been. I don't stay in a line, but as we spoke about in, I think, season three, that's also because I'm indigo, right? Like, mm. it's just some people have naturally those traits. It just, I'm rebellious. Mm. Rebellious whilst also wanted to be loved by everyone, which is a real, you know, push pull there. But I am both of those things. Um, but there are a lot of people, you know, and I get it because even during the past couple of years, the sheer amount of public pressure to conform for someone like me who is so rebellious, I did find myself sometimes taking the easy way out, which was not rebelling. Yeah, but understand that that was 3D rearing its ugly head, really yeah. just trying to reach and get its tentacles into anything it could in order to pull people back because yeah. it was instinctively understood that something if we don't do this now it's our power is going to be lost forever like this is it this is the mm -hmm. one opportunity we have so then what do we do how do we stay above that struggle living our lives regardless of all the noise and judgment and shame that's just being flung out and i know that even by the end of 2021 it seemed as if some of it was tapering off people were kind of exhausted everyone was like okay no, I'm just doing you know you do you yeah there was a there was a bit more of that but trust me when i say that all these things come in phases right it's like cuz we tend towards complacency people tend to kind of give in they they look for this kind of normalization and then people get flung back out because things haven't shifted and because we're here for these bigger shifts we have to keep moving. So the second thing to do is to dig into your purpose. So we've been, you know, banging on about purpose for season after season because, and you've seen this too, when you were in your karma and out of your karma, whatever, was the one thing that grounded you was your work, your, your mm. sense of purpose. And again, it's weird because when I look back at it now, was it a blessing or was it a curse? I'm not sure. Because spending, feeling like crap, Spending your days talking about feeling like crap, going home writing about feeling like crap, you know, and then trying to figure out why you feel like crap. It became all consuming. Yes. Right. And we joked earlier off off mic about how I would, you know, how, how fast this all was for me mm -hmm. and how it was very much condensed. And in some ways, I'm so lucky that it was because I got out of it faster Mm -hmm. But in other ways, when I think about it, it it had to push me so much deeper mm -hmm. to do so. So my purpose was amazing because it brought me the little bits of joy that I could in those times. Yeah. But it also, for me specifically, made it all consuming, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But again, that's maybe what was necessary for me. But again, it did make me feel, though, even saying that, it did make me feel like I was doing something about it. That I wasn't just sitting, wallowing at home, thinking like, oh, let me look at all the suffering I've ever had and just stare at it. No, I felt like I was working through it and yeah. working to leave it behind. Because as we say a lot, it's not that growing up makes you suffer. All you're doing when you grow up is looking at the places where you're already suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it allowed me to move through that, right? Mm -hmm. And there were so many positives as well as a result of that, mm -hmm. whether it was 
you know, deepening my relationships with other people and myself, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, is that we are here for like what got me through it, even yeah. when I was Thank talking, you. feeling, shitting my feelings constantly, <laughs> and it was getting darker and darker and darker. Mm-hmm. What kept me going was I just knew I was here for a reason. Yeah. And actually that made all the difference because mm. I think all of us know that we're here for a reason. We might not know what it is, but we know that we are, which is true. We are here yes. for a reason, bigger reason to witness and participate in a shift in consciousness Yes, and a smaller reason, which is just as important. They are just as important. Oh. One does not supersede the other in importance. Yeah. Yeah. Is our own personal growth and evolution, Precisely. right? Which is effectively being able to experience heaven on earth in this lifetime. Not <laughs> only is it about we're here for a reason but that's why it's joy and harmony that underpin this new world Mm -hmm. yeah because why the fuck are we here otherwise yeah and that's really unknown that's very different to look at to think that wait a second i'm here to live not to suffer but to be in joy i'm here to live to feel fulfilled Mm -hmm. and happy and even blissful I'm here to feel connected to everyone outside of me, yet feel so connected to myself, and that's why? That's so unknown. No wonder we can't picture it. No wonder we see everyone around us with these power vacuums trying to grapple for the old. Because a part of us, and I get it, I've been there, don't even believe that it's possible to have these things. If we've been not just us, but generation after generation have been born into separation. Mm -hmm. We've been born into a life of suffering only to attempt to transcend it, to then die, (laughs) to then believe that we're actually here to be really on our personal heavens on earth. Yeah. It's, it's not just, you know, utopic or whatever. It's, it's like, who's given her the drugs and where can I find them? You know what I mean? I sound like I'm selling something, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. My world looks on the outside exactly the same as it looked two three years ago but i'm living my heaven on my earth Mm -hmm. and for me anyway it is unknown but it's only unknown because the known's been so shit if that makes sense but to be able to have those relationships to to know that bliss to know that happiness and i don't think it came out in the previous episode when we were talking about um future relationships is that and I'm going to say, I I probably won't be the last episode I say in this season, is we are doing this for future generations so that what is unknown to us becomes known to them. The reason why we live in the world that we do is that because every generation that's born into it has perpetuated it. Yeah. And enough. Yeah. I don't want to have children until I know that those children won't grow up in a world where they are being told that they're wrong for being who they are. I don't want to watch my nephews live in a world where they have to hide who they are to fit in. And so, yes, I do this for me because I'm selfish and I want a happy life (laughs) full of fun things. Yes. But I also do this because anyone that I love, Mm -hmm. and that could be in my family or that could be anyone because we are all one in some ways, Mm -hmm. no one deserves to experience what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. And if I can change that then i have served because so much of what we're doing right now in these early years of 2000 and these early years of 5d is really undoing all of that wiring and all of that damage with every word with every thought with every value behold and that takes time and we've damaged the children enough that enough is enough already so in order to i mean and this can apply So when we say this or when we discuss, well, when when we talk about this, this can be applied in so many ways. It can be applied to us. It can be applied to how we parent and how we approach our children or just future generations is that in order to be able to move into the unknown and to be able to be impactful as we make this transition, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite episodes <laughs> of all time, episode nine, season one, which I say this all the time. Who knew what an important episode that was? In that episode, we discussed what were the pillars, the four pillars of trust, trust, hope, faith, and knowing. And so when we're looking at trust, we're really understanding that we have the power to live our lives for ourselves. We're trusting ourselves to do that. Completely. 
completely. And with faith that it's going to work out even if we can't see how. But by moving forward, we have to try. Because we have to try. Yeah. It doesn't, what we've been doing doesn't work. Right. We have to try something else. It's a collective fuck this. And knowing. So knowing is that, is grasping that our lives are a product of all of our choices, which shows how powerful we are. So we have to start making all the choices that match what we know to be true, as opposed to the fears that have informed all of our past decisions. That one's like very, very wordy and weighty, but do you get what I mean? Yeah, no, totally. Because okay. it's like, if I keep making choices, it's basically making calm your bitch in <laughs> a really strange way of saying it. But yeah, it's making calm your bitch. If I'm going to continue making choices based on the fear that I'm not good enough, yeah. I'm going to live in a world which tells me I'm not good enough. Yeah. Can I know? Can I do the work enough? Can I make karma my bitch so that I know I am not just good enough, but I am everything? Mm -hmm. So then can I make choices that match that to create a world where I have everything? Mm. If we can create one, we can create the other. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It is very simple. And finally is hope. So hope for ourselves and the world that the bullshit doesn't win. That we can, even if it looks impossible right now. If an, even if it seems like everyone who rep and everything and everyone who represents 3D and separation and division, they'll never go away. It is important to keep holding the vision and to be able to imagine, which is what we said in previous episodes this season, is you will not get to that world that you can envision or the one that is within our imaginations because we've never seen it before if we don't hold the idea. Well, you know, when we talk about hope being our heart's desires, hmm. right? What could we desire more than a world with all of our desires in it? It's a bit like when people go, oh, if you had to go to a genie and ask for one wish, what would you ask for? And the smart asses in the room go, Un you know, unlimited wishes. <laughs> yes. That's effectively what we're doing here. Yeah. We're saying let's wish for unlimited wishes, mm -hmm. but in a much more concrete way of, of let's create, let's help create this one desire where all our other desires are held within it. Mm. Right. That's beautiful. It's, yeah. the, it's the same thing. Yeah. So what that means is that we have to keep striving, working, playing, mm -hmm. infusing our lives with joy, infusing our lives with harmony, infusing our lives with, can it get better than this? Oh yeah, turns out it can. <laughs> you know, that we need to be going, for, you know. Rhea is on her unicorn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean. My unicorn is ready to ride and my unicorn can ride. And why the fuck wouldn't I let it run free and play? Because that's the thing. If it isn't fun, at least most of the time, is it really worth doing? Seriously. <laughs> you know, I remember being like working in a law firm, working crazy hours, mm -hmm. like making money for the first time probably in my life, like that, which was my own and realizing I had no time to spend it. Yeah. My life was miserable even though I had all the things I should have wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. If we are not playing, if we're not having fun, like and not in the, oh, I'm wasted, I can't remember who I am way, because that's just running away. Yeah. But actually I am present in my body and I am happy about it. And actually having fun, which and actually, not a lot of people have ever experienced. Oh my God. And it's like the best drug ever. That's what we want to, if we want our lives to be like that, let's infuse our lives with it. Yeah. And let's keep, and we have to create it. We have to keep creating it over and over again because, look, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't want, like, the, I'm not going to say doldrums, so I don't know what that means, but I don't <laughs> want, like, a boring life. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I want a hectic life or a chaotic life, but I want a, a life where I wake up every morning and I'm excited for the day ahead. Mm -hmm. Even if it's as silly as having dinner with someone I love and watching a good fucking movie. How's I want to be, ex it's not, but do you know what I mean? I want to be excited for the days ahead. Yeah. And I can only create a world like that by living it. Yeah. So do you remember how we said that respect was one of those? So it wasn't an underpinning, but it was like an overarching relationship theme. Yeah. Fun is the other piece. Oh, no way. Yeah, way. Did you just hear that in your head right now? Uh, a little bit ago. I wanted um, to make sure I got that in. Okay. <laughs> well, you're just talking about, we need to have fun. And I'm like, but fun is part of it. It's as really? essential as respect. And which is why, as we're kind of seeing a lot of these relationships fall apart and everyone's all devastated and, 
and sad and wondering, you know, why and how is this happening to me or what did I do to deserve this? And all I can think is, but guess what? You're free to have fun now. <laughs> what is love but shining our light for others to see? Mm -hmm. And where, what example do I use all the goddamn time about the first time I can, well, I connect to that is dancing in a nightclub with my light just shining. Mm -hmm. I, my light shines when I'm having fun. Yeah. So of course, yeah. fun is important. It's not, it's not something we do as children and grow out of. Well, we have it beaten out of us. Yeah. And I think we also need to constantly define what is fun for us, right? As opposed to what appears to be fun, what is fun for other people. It's part of knowing ourselves, too, because I know my idea of fun is probably boring to you, but it works for me, right? And so, you know, yeah, and maybe there are tedious aspects to one's purpose or work, and maybe we spend once a week having to deal with certain amount of tedium. That is life on earth right? You pay your bills, you do stuff. So when we talk about having fun, it's not about not having responsibility. Yeah. It's the opposite actually. Yeah. Cause once you can take responsibility for your life, then you can really have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Then but, the, then, then the sort of dreary other tidbits that we have to go through, they don't feel so bad. They just, they're, blips. they're just, they're, they're just things you've got to do. Yeah. They're just blips in our day. They yeah. don't mean anything. Yeah. And they just don't take on the same sort of weary significance that they do when we're in our karma mm. or we're really unhappy. That brings me to something that I think is, and I know we've said it before, but it, it has to be said now again, because happiness is an end goal for this lifetime. So I mean, isn't that great news? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's not like martyrdom, <laughs> sacrificing, <laughs> bit of pain relief. It's happiness. It's genuine, happy fucking lives. Everyone kept saying happy ever after. Here we go. But That's how do we true. do that? That's What's the thing true. we have to do? We have to end our karmic realities. Which and we do by ourselves. We do by ourselves. And the more of us who get on board with it, the more of a, a scalable impact that we'll have within our community, you know, within our family units, within our community. I mean, everyone's happier once there's less karma in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but people won't notice it necessarily unless they're really in it and doing it themselves. And consciously help usher in a new world for our future generations. And for anybody who's had kids or have had to deal with kids or teenagers, they push us, these young ones, they will push us to realize our happiness by mirroring our bullshit. You hear that crying child? <laughs> it's probably pushing that parent to realize... <laughs> They're bullshit. <laughs> so, so the third thing is to unleash ourselves fully from 3D and allow our souls to guide us the rest of the way home. Yeah, because unleashing yourselves from 3D is connecting to that soul. Yeah. So once you've done that connection, <laughs> then there you go. The I think rest... it dims the connection. I'll be fair. Like, I feel like we can have people. No, no, no. Have, like, but what I mean connection. is like when you unleash yourself from 3D, making karma your bitch, mm -hmm. really connecting to who you are yeah. and what you want and honoring that. Yeah. That's effectively you connecting to your soul, your higher self as well. It's you becoming a whole. Mm -hmm. And once you are, you can follow your divine design. We talk about fate. We talk about all of that. But that's when that kicks in. Mm. And so, yeah, you're going home. But you're also creating that home as you go. Mm. And honestly, I don't like, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's not as long Say or it. hard path as we think I, I thought it would be. No. I thought that every time I made a change, my whole world would crumble. Mm. And I, and I know I keep saying that, you know, a lot of it looks the same, but that's meant to be comforting, not frustrating. The bits that I didn't like have gone. Mm -hmm. The bits that I liked, I've kept. And I was always so scared of that, but we just need to think honestly, like what's the alternative here? To remain unhappy? This experiment is worth embracing. We yeah. have nothing to lose. For a lot of people, though, let's be fair, they're not necessarily thinking consciously, I'm choosing unhappiness over the unknown. What they're choosing is safety. safety. I don't know if unhappy people are necessarily thinking in terms of unhappiness or versus happiness. They're, they're thinking security, safety. Normal. Normal. But at the same time, it's so funny. I, I mean, I guess I get it, but 
I am obviously the person who wants to be safest. I don't know how to ride a bike properly. Let's just put that in perspective. <laughs> Safety is always a top priority for me physically. Um, and emotionally, I didn't say anything. I was always, I couldn't be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You know, mentally, I overthought everything. I get safety. Honestly, get you it. just had this like invisible bubble wrap around you, mm. which I never saw until I got to know you. And I think, wow, she really wrapped herself up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be hurt anymore. Mm-hmm. It hurt too much. Mm. But I also couldn't be sure that on the other side of that bubble wrap was not more pain. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't want to take the risk. So I knew I was unhappy to an extent, but I also thought that was as happy as I ever was going to get. Yeah. I mean, but, is mitigating risk really worth it? And that's why we say just do whatever you want to do, because even if you are mitigating risk, eventually you'll get to a point where you do say, fuck this, because what's the choice anyway? Mm. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.